What's up everyone, my name is Gothics, and for today's video, I'll be reacting to The Greatest Lie Ever Sold, which is a documentary that was made by The Daily Wire and it's starring Candace Owens. I am super excited to react to this and I even have my uh, Daily Wire Leftist Tears Tumblr. It's the only platform that I'm subscribed to right now and uh, it's filled with delicious coffee that will keep me fueled as I enjoy watching BLM get exposed, which is one of my favorite hobbies. <laughs> but yeah, as always, whenever I do these reactions to documentaries, I'm not going to react to the entire thing because I still want you guys to support the folks over at The Daily Wire because they're uh, doing big things over there, trying to make alternative media so you don't have to keep uh, sending your money to companies that hate you. <laughs> All right. So um, without further ado, Let's get into this. That's the ugliest statue I've ever seen in my life. Okay, really quickly. This is a quote by Malcolm X, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Malcolm X. Uh, isn't it interesting that whenever the conversation of black representation comes up, they totally conveniently neglect to mention the things that Malcolm X said about white liberals, virtue signaling and pretending to be the friend of the Negro, or how the media is the enemy of the people, or even how the Democratic Party uses black people as political chumps. Isn't it interesting that representation, we talk about amplifying black voices, no one ever seems to bring up Malcolm X. I wonder why. It was just gut instinct, you know? It just felt like we were being told, look over here, look over here. And I guess part of my personality is when I feel that way and somebody's going, focus only here, only here, only here, I wanna know, okay, but what about over there? George Floyd was a part of my wake up moment. It was around the time that we were being told to stay home and flatten the curve because COVID is so bad and it's gonna kill off your grandma. Meanwhile, as they're shutting down schools and shutting down places of business. No, no, you can go out and march in the streets to protest for this guy that no one really knew, uh, but because it was on TV and you see racism plastered everywhere, apparently COVID wasn't so bad anymore, as long as you were going out to march for racial injustice. That is the media telling you, pay attention to this thing, which means something else is happening in the back. You have to stop taking the bait, everyone. Stop taking the damn bait. And it wasn't personal personal, at least not in the beginning, it wasn't personal. I would say it certainly wasn't personal until. Uh, this video was just, it was just so disgusting, but I think it's important to understand how easily people can be corrupted into saying this type of disgusting nonsense. <laughs> uh, Anna, <laughs> I used to watch the Young Turks and then I figured out how to use my brain. That show is just full of emotion. And listen to what they're saying. What exactly qualifies as becoming corrupted? Thinking for yourself, thinking with reason and not emotion, having a difference of opinion. Because I'm sure if I went from the political right to the political left, the left would see me as smart. Oh yes, you're one of us. But the second you walk away, oh, now it's a problem. These people are sick. And and then this one. Uh, listen, I love Dave Chappelle. I think he, he is a really funny comedian. But the shit that he said. Candace Owen, that rotten bitch. Yeah. If anybody's going to pretend to get their feelings hurt about it, what we say about Candace Owens, I will laugh and laugh and laugh. I don't care what this did. I don't care if he personally kicked Candace Owens and her stinky pussy. I he said, I don't care what George Floyd did. This is what a lot of people said. I don't care about his past. I don't care if he was a criminal. We should go out and march. Okay, where's that same energy when Tyrone is shooting Rodney for stepping on his J's? You care about black people when it entails a white police officer. Otherwise, you have normalized black death within your own community. Stop the nonsense. We are seeing looting throughout the city. Bricks are being thrown at police officers. We are seeing increasing violence amongst protesters throughout the country. Cities are erupting into chaos and violence. How long can you be peaceful when your people are dying? What do you mean by that, your people? Why would anyone pledge blind allegiance 
to a group of people on the basis of skin color. Skin color tells me nothing about your morality. We're out here trying to show them that we're angry. This is not just about George Floyd. It's about everything that's happened in our world. Did you hear what she said in that clip? Justifying all the chaos and violence. Oh, because we're angry. Are you a toddler? Because toddlers throw tantrums. So right now I am researching Alvin and Teresa Scott. They were George Floyd's last known roommates. And we basically just had producers reach out and say, working on documentary pertaining to George Floyd. That was kind of the only information that we gave them in the hopes that s saying my name would not yeah. scare them away. It'll be really interesting to see what they have to say if they speak to me and don't slam the door in my face. This should be obvious, but in case you didn't realize this by now, there is a tactic where you can totally discredit someone else by slandering them. As long as you keep repeating a label, even if it's false, as long as you keep repeating that, it becomes a barrier between that person and someone else that's seeking truth. So it happens a lot on my channel where people will say, well, Gothics is a grifter. Okay, what does that even mean? If I am a grifter, who cares if I'm if what I'm saying is true? I've also been called a white supremacist. She's a white supremacist somehow. Okay, sure, let's go with that. Who cares if the information that I have is true? It causes people to think twice about where the information is coming from. They do the same thing to literally every black person that has walked away from the left or have become a conservative whenever they have something legitimate to say about the Democratic Party. Oh, no, no, don't listen to them. They're just the grifter. They're just being used by the conservatives. They're getting paid. Oh, okay, I guess I won't listen to them. Come on, guys. Hello, um, Alvin Monego and uh, I'm George Floyd's uh, previous roommate prior to his uh, death. Uh, this is our house, and um, give you a little walkthrough and uh, tell you a little bit about our relationship, uh, me and Floyd. So, okay. There's some good moments here. It was like we lived together almost, uh, I guess it was about four and a half years, almost five years, yeah. Him and Floyd. Teresa uh, often uh, read the Bible together. And yeah. And that was a. Uh, all of these is what he did. Like he got a uh, Proverbs mark right here. He used to read this all the time. Let me see, what else did he read? He read Matthews right here. And so he used to be um, in his room, and we, our room was next door. And I used to hear him out loud reading his Bible all the time. And I used to be listening to him, and I'm like, wow, he really do wow. be reading that Bible, you know? The last day I seen Floyd. We stood up here on the top of the stairs. And this time, we, play, we prayed longer than we ever did. I think we prayed for like about five or eight minutes. Usually we'll do a prayer and it's like quick and everything. But this day, we prayed longer than we ever prayed. And I said, I said, Floyd, I'll see you when you get back, okay? He said, T, I'll be back. I said, promise me you're coming back. He said, I promise I'll be back. And that was the last time I seen him. God can change people. He, he really can. So say what you want about this guy's past. I definitely do not agree with propping him up as a martyr by any means. But the fact that he was soaking in the word tells me that he was on the right track. And um, I can only pray that he was saved before he passed. But um, yeah, check out Proverbs. There's a lot of a lot of wisdom in that book. Do you think that a, a lot of people maybe came out of the woodwork because there was an opportunity you know, to grandstand, to be yeah. on stage, to, you know, a lot of money got thrown around, which I, I, which is part of what I'm exploring in this documentary. I mean, Black Lives Matter Global Network came out and said, we raised 90 million plus dollars. And they did this with his face, just his face or saying you had some association with him mm -hmm. could have gotten, you know, garnered a lot of people money. Do you think that people took advantage of him? Yeah, it's, of it's like they, they, uh, they use it as uh, what you say, a way of funding whatever they motivation was. And then, like, uh, at sometimes when I went to the George Floyd Memorial, it was different individuals going around there saying Don donations for this, for Floyd, for this. And yeah. they, you didn't know where they was coming from. You, you got a little metal box, <laughs> and I don't know who you are. Where is this going? So many people 
looked at the death of George Floyd as an opportunity to make money or to get recognition. You saw random people making GoFundMe accounts to raise money for Floyd, not to mention the numerous Black Lives Matter chapters across the United States and around the world raising money. Where this money was going, we have no idea. And then of course we have black content creators, which prior to Black Lives Matter, no one was paying attention to their content, but then all of a sudden, hey, I'm a blacktivist, I'm black, I support Black Lives Matter, look at me as a way to get more sponsorships, get more publicity for their content. I had companies reach out to me wanting to partner because they needed a black face to platform whatever social justice narrative they were doing. And I said, no, thank you. I'm not gonna be used as a pawn as you exploit the death of some random guy to push whatever products you have. That's disgusting to me. You don't care about black lives. You care about black lives when it somehow helps your personal situation. So no, it's it, oh, gross. None of them ever came here to employ been living in this house. We've been in this house going on six years, am I right? Yeah, but for, none, for none them, the never. four years, no, uh, he just. They never wanted his stuff. I mean, I would think that if, if my son, They didn't son, even come and look daughter, and see where the man lived at. They never came to see where Floyd lived. They never came and get none of his stuff, nothing. That was my oldest brother. I love him. I'm never gonna get my brother back. I would like to just like say one day, uh, this meet his daughter because it's like, yes. that's an extension of him. Mm -hmm. right. And I just to be proud to just see one well, time. Well, not his daughter now, we, get, he, we found out he got more. Well, they found out that that wasn't true. So you mean three kids came that ain't his? Just one. I think they did a DNA check and the, the, the boy is not his and the other girl. Are you serious? It's rumors, I don't know. That's, that's, we gotta leave that to Maury. I don't do that. I don't do paternity. <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting. So you can get up on national television and say, I miss my brother. I love my brother so much, but you didn't bother to go see him at any of the time that, okay. I can understand feeling remorse and feeling guilt for not being in someone's life. But I think after that situation, you would want to see where your brother was living the entire time to learn more about his life. And it's crazy because whenever there's money involved, people come out of the woodwork. This is why I've always said, if I somehow won the lottery someday, no one's gonna know about it. Not a single soul. Because all of a sudden, my lost aunts are gonna be coming out like, hey, remember me? No. No, I do not. <laughs> 1998, he spent uh, 10 months in prison for theft with a firearm. In 2002, he spent eight months in prison for a cocaine offense. 2004, just two years later, he spent another 10 months in prison for a cocaine offense. By the way, I am not saying that if you have a record, you don't deserve a second chance. I do draw Correct. the line when it comes to second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth, ch and ninth chances. Two things can be true at once. <laughs> you can both say, that George Floyd didn't deserve to die, no matter how you believe he died, nobody de deserves to die, in my opinion. And you can also say that objectively, this person that did die was not a saint. Mm -hmm. This person was not an angel. I believe people can change and I believe in forgiveness, but there is something very troubling about propping up a guy who had a bad criminal past and then saying, hey, don't, don't worry about that. Forget about all of that stuff because we're talking about police brutality, Black Lives Matter. What that's doing is sending a message to other people that they can do as many bad things as they want. They can commit as many crimes as they want because at the end, they'll be propped up as a martyr. All of this information was already out, right? We heard about him um, assaulting the pregnant woman, breaking into her house. We heard about the, the drug crimes. We heard about all of these things happening, but hey, that doesn't matter. None of that matters. Meanwhile, <laughs> a lot of folks will go online and dig for tweets. 10, 15 years ago that someone said something moderately racist and now, oh, you gotta cancel them. Get them off the internet. You're, you're, you're excommunicated from society because of this thing you posted back in 1995. Was the internet even around back then? I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> nobody knew who George Floyd was, but also nobody knew who Derek Chauvin was. People were, were taking a picture, a, not even a picture, a still from a video and saying, the look in Derek Chauvin's eyes was something worse than hate. What is this headline trying to convey? 
what is it trying to invoke, I should say? It's trying to invoke an emotional response. We can assume what someone is feeling. Maybe if you see some tears in their eyes, you can assume that they're sad. Maybe if they're bright-eyed or they're wide-eyed, it's like they're excited or they're happy. Uh, but this, this is hate to you? How do you interpret that? What are you going with? CNN, of course. <laughs> Satan. This is, this is your Satan. People were taking a, a storyline that was given to them from the media and saying, here it is, George Floyd, he's your hero. That's it, that's the story, the end. Let me just preface uh, this. You know, I have no dog in the fight here, all right? We classically get a lot of officer-involved shootings and in-custody deaths, but we, we take them from all sides. So my, my advocacy is for facts and evidence, not for people or entities. So if the officers are doing what they're supposed to be doing as they were trained to do it, I'm gonna tell you. Oh, I love what he just said. I don't take sides. I don't work for entities. It's just facts and evidence. That's like whenever someone says, oh, are you shilling for the Republican Party or Libertarians or whatever? No, 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 no. I don't take any sides. I go where the facts and the truth are. That's it. I wish more people thought that way. You would agree, Chief, that from the perspective of Miss Frazier's camera, it appears that Officer Chauvin's knee is on the neck of Mr. Floyd. Yes. Would you agree that from the perspective of Officer King's body camera, it appears that Officer Chauvin's knee was more on Mr. Floyd's shoulder blade? Um, yes. They had to have the jury believe that it was a neck restraint, it was the knee on the neck, it was asphyxiation that killed George Floyd. However, there was a ton of evidence that George Floyd consumed a toxic, lethal cocktail of fentanyl and methamphetamine. Let's put it in perspective. Three grains of fentanyl on the head of a lead pencil, enough to kill you, enough to kill me. And so they had to continuously inculcate the public to believe that Derek Chauvin intentionally premeditatedly murdered George Floyd and drugs had absolutely nothing to do with it as as Lindsay and the toxicologist presented that awful testimony do you recall describing the level of fentanyl as a fatal level of fentanyl I recall describing it in other circumstances it would be a fatal level yes in other circumstances what does that mean? In other circumstances, it would be if, what? Had Mr. Floyd been home alone in his locked residence with no evidence of trauma, and the only autopsy finding was that fentanyl level, then yes, I would certify his death as due to fentanyl toxicity. So in other words, <laughs> if George Floyd was at home and he consumed that amount of drugs in his home alone, that would have been the reason why he died. But because he was on the ground in police custody, that's not why he died. Are you high? We've got to get more confrontational, make sure that they, th they know that we mean business. I want to see the charge of the arresting officer take place. We are not talking about a split second decision that was made incorrectly. I can't see coming to a different answer there. Thank you. Real quickly, have you seen the body camera footage yourself? No, I have not yet. Oh, you, oh, you stupid. You stupid. You haven't seen the body cam footage, but you wanted, guys, these people are using black folks. They're using you. Wake up. And again, you saw Maxine Waters, water, whatever her name is. <laughs> you saw Maxine over there saying, we need to go out, we need to protest. And this is in the midst of the pandemic remember you got to stay home and flatten the curve hello wake up why would bruh <laughs> i just these people give me a headache another quote from malcolm x if you're not careful the newspapers will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressing absolutely you cannot watch this documentary and still believe that 
this whole Black Lives Matter movement was something legitimate. You cannot honestly convince yourself that. If you do, you're stupid. That is stupidity now. Everyone's ignorant. But when you're presented with facts and you still believe the lie, now you're just stupid. So you mentioned that you were getting threats on Twitter, and I'm assuming that's where it began. Can you talk a little about what those threats were? I think they started immediately within, I think, hours of the actual incident. They, they said that Bob Kroll and Liz Collin will be dead by the time the year ends. They came to the station where I worked and held a protest uh, during the 6 o'clock news demanding that I be fired. For? Um, being married to a police officer. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm seeing this story from so many different uh, lenses, uh, as, a, as a wife, uh, as a journalist, but as a mom, I think it's where it, it's where it hit me the hardest. I can imagine. The early days, I'm calling friends, hey, can you take Anthony, we have another death threat, or my parents are watching him for a few days, he doesn't know what's going on. I mean, you can't even explain this stuff to adults, nonetheless. Uh, a seven-year-old child, and he happened to see a little clip of the news um, in, the, in the early days and said, wait a minute, so the police made a mistake and they're stealing stuff from Target? That's a smart kid. You cannot claim that you are on the side of morality when you think the solution is to send death threats to someone totally unrelated to an incident or send death threats to anyone for any reason. Again, this comes back to when you think so emotionally, you don't use logic. There's nothing logical about any of this. So this was a Black Lives Matter organized protest. A hundred people were there um, and we were out of town. After that happened, I sent an email to our newsroom and I said, this seems newsworthy. There was a, a state rep candidate there that was beating me in effigy. They made pinatas of Bob and I dressed as Klansmen. Well, are you, f are you serious? First of all, who created the KKK? Pop quiz, everyone. Who created the KKK? Hmm? Are you serious? Well, okay, let me go back. I just want to look at that again. There was a, a state rep candidate there that was beating me in F. Look, 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 look. You see this? I want you to think about this for a second. How much money and time do you think went into making these things? Now, take that money and time and consider where you could put that towards. Like, how you can use that in a productive way. You want to talk about black lives and uplifting black people? Could you not maybe take the time and your money and go to these inner cities and do something directly there to help the people. But no, let's buy some KKK pinatas because Black Lives Matter or something like that. What? What was the process of making these? I mean, if you've ever been so angry you wanted to make a pinata, that's where I'm at. You're, you're, you, ooh, I, I, okay. I'm not even gonna... <laughs> I'm not even gonna comment on that. Just f them. Just absolutely f them. That's, that's where I'm at. You're stupid. My name is Fraser Ross, and I own retail stores in Los Angeles, California. During the George Floyd protests that swept the nation, what happened? We were looted for over four hundred thousand dollars worth of merchandise. Wow. It's really it was a disaster. You then went online, and what did you observe that you thought was out of the ordinary? Chrissy. Tegan had posted on her Instagram, you know, I'll help the protesters get out of jail. Why? Where was this money when we're dealing with black on black crime? Why don't we start there, Chrissy Teigen? I'm very confused. Then she said, well, let me up it to another 100,000. Now, when you have approximately 30 million followers at the time, you can start a movement and people say, oh, well, she's going to bail me out and everything. And then, you know, you've got celebrities like Jennifer Garner giving four hearts to that post. Well, they all live in gated communities and it's not their stuff being destroyed. I thought the same thing when I kept hearing defund the police as you live in a gated community and you have your own personal security and, uh, you know, the, the peasants, the, the peasant protesters, they're not going to come anywhere near you because you're fine. So yeah, defund the police for everyone else. They can take care of themselves, right? How out of touch do you have to be to 
say that you're just going to bail these processors out. I just threw my pen. <laughs> how, how out of touch do you have to be to say that? I'll just bail out these protesters. Who cares if they keep getting out of jail and they go right back into the system because they keep doing the same thing? It's not my community. Who cares? I went online and posted an Instagram of the store being looted, and I tagged, thanks, Chrissy. She wrote under this post, well, like anyone's really shopped there for 10 years. Excuse me? Wow. Wow. Guys, I cannot stress this enough. Stop propping up these celebrities and idolizing them because at the end of the day, they are human beings. And most human beings are stupid. They lack common sense and they're just as idiotic as the average person that you meet on the street. So her instinct after seeing that yeah. your store had been actually looted. Yeah. Her response is, well, no one shops at your store anyway. So she was not sympathetic to the victim in this circumstance. Not, not one bit. But Jen Atkins was actually worse. Jen Atkins, mm -hmm. she's a friend of Chrissy Teigen. You've tagged her in this post because you sell her products. Mm -hmm. She comments on this post as well. Right. Basically saying, use the shampoo to clean up the graffiti. And my looting cream comes out in October. So they're having fun. They're, they're mocking the looting. Right. You should be in federal prison if you're inciting violence with that many people following you. Yes. If I were to go into someone's store and break all of their shit and steal everything, what would that be called? That would be called a crime. So just because people are going out with the intention of somehow fighting police brutality, it does not negate the reality that that is still a crime. This isn't difficult. So let me ask you a question. Um, Chrissy Teigen, Jen Adkin, a blogger in which they both follow. Why do you think they felt the need to get involved on such a level and to be so supportive of the looting? Well, I think they had, there was a, you know, a side that they felt that they, it would help them become relevant and yes. heroes and everything. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Again, as I, as I said earlier, I saw it with just content creators uh, when I was still streaming on Twitch. It was a bunch of people that, uh, found that they could become relevant overnight by simply saying, I support Black Lives Matter. That's all you had to do because what happened if you didn't support it? You're a traitor. Oh, you're an extremist. You're a terrorist. You don't care about black people. So obviously the correct decision in that circumstance is to say that you support something like Black Lives Matter unless you want to get ostracized from the rest of the world. And that's exactly what happened to me, but I don't give a shit. My name is Charles and I grew up in Kenya. How long have you lived in Minneapolis? I came to Minneapolis in May of 1997, so it's been 27 years. 27 years. Yes. What was this city before the George Floyd riots? Well, it was just a typical Midwestern city with low crime and hardworking people. And we just lived here and enjoyed life together. Yeah. yeah. And then things took a bit of a turn and this is something different, would you say? Well, what we saw was like a venting of anger. It was complete opposite of Minnesota nice. Yeah. And uh, we saw anger, mayhem, looting, destruction of property, burning of police precincts, and it was completely foreign to me. Uh, I'm used to something like this in third world countries, but not in America, and quite honestly, not in Minnesota. Okay, so I'm so glad that she's speaking to someone that came from another country. I think he, I think he said Kenya. The people that support these social justice causes tend to be those that are born in America. They are people that are living privileged lives and assume the grass is greener on the other side without considering the thousands upon thousands of immigrants that are coming into this country because they're trying to escape something. What are they escaping? What exactly are they running from? If America is so racist and bigoted, then what are you going to tell these guys that are trying to come into the country? Don't come? Microaggressions is too racist, BLM, All right? You have to ask yourself, what are they trying to escape from? There are people that live under true oppression, that can't speak their mind, that can't speak out against the government, that can't afford to feed their family because the government won't allow them to work. This is something that I wish these social justice 
<laughs> protesters would consider when they're out there trying to fight injustice is consider, hold, hold on a second, how come so many immigrants don't support this movement? They're black. What's going on? Uh, there's a story to be told there if you only stop for a moment and pay attention to it. It says, you are now entering the free state of George Floyd. What does that mean? What is, look at this. <laughs> It looks like a chocolate fist. <laughs> so we are now entering a state where really anything goes, right? <laughs> really sort of anything goes, right? Well, I, I think anything goes here. We've seen death. We've seen a man shot right in front of us. We've seen a woman who was pregnant shot right in front of us. And right here, we had a huge bus, like a school bus. And it was a clinic, it was a medical clinic, and the number one thing they were treating during the time of the riots was gunshot wounds right here. As I'm looking around, there's so many um, empty shops on the block, things that are boarded up. How does that make you feel to see that? Is, is there ever gonna be life again on this street? Well, I feel like there has been a tremendous loss of, of the way of life here has changed, the economy, the destruction of businesses. Most of the businesses here that were destroyed, had, the insurance would not be able to cover that. Imagine that, you have an autonomous zone that people took over where there's no rules and a lot of people are being treated for gunshot wounds and businesses are closed down, it looks like shit. Uh, imagine, who would have thought that having a community filled with a bunch of angry, emotional people would result in that. Who would have thought? I often say that BLM now stands for Buy Lavish Mansions because that's what the BLM movement does. You actually saw in recent weeks there was a person who was effectively working for BLM that personally purchased a mansion and she pays $3 million for it. Within days, like I think it's 48 hours later, flips that to the BLM organization who pays nearly $6 million for that same house, booking a personal profit to the person who actually bought it. So that's a self-dealing transaction that enriches personally somebody who's working for Black Lives Matter. Why is BLM buying big lavish mansions in the first place? When their donors yeah. were understandably outraged by the luxurious purchase, Patrice Cullors came forth and also admitted that she hired both her mother and her brother to work at the property. What sort of work, you ask? Well, Patrice Culler's brother, Paul Cullors, is a graffiti artist by trade. That's what he's done his entire life. He's done graffiti. Patrice instead hired her brother to do security for her. She paid Paul $840,000. That's almost a million dollars in just one year to her graffiti artist brother, his newly established security firm. Patrice also gave funding from Black Lives Matter to take care of the man who fathered her son. His name is Damon Turner, and he received $970,000 from BLM to his company, Trap Heels LLC, which purportedly provided live production and media. Patrice organized at her BLM mansion was for her young son's birthday party. Nothing says taking on police brutality quite like hosting a birthday party for your young son in a Los Angeles mansion paid for by donors to the cause. Patrice likes parties, by the way, because she also threw a party there to celebrate the inauguration of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And yeah, that's somewhat suspicious because what do Democrats have to do with Black Lives Matter? Okay, before we get into that, let me tell you guys a fun fact. Black Lives Matter, and this is public information, admitted that they were trained Marxists, okay? Marxism is something that was created by a man named Karl Marx. Now, if you look into the biography of Karl Marx, you will see that he was essentially a freeloader. He didn't like to work. He didn't like to take care of his own bills. He was always broke. And what is BLM doing with all of these donations? They're using it to buy things for themselves. Here's a mansion. Here's lots of money for my family members. Let's throw all of these lavish parties. They're using this Marxist framework that was, again, invented by a guy that could not hold a single job in his life. And they're using that to line their own pockets. 
Also suspicious is the fact that Black Lives Matter designated a whopping eight million dollars to an out of country grant. What? I thought this charity was about addressing police brutality in the United States. Apparently to do that, you need to send eight million dollars to Toronto, Canada, mm -hmm. to an organization named M4BJ. They purchased a $6.3 million, 10,000 square foot downtown property in Toronto. And I should also mention that M4BJ is run by Patrice's wife, Janaya Khan, because it is. She is the co-founder, believe it or not. And here's where it gets really interesting. Janaya Khan is gender non-conforming. These terms can be quite sensitive. So let You're a woman. <laughs> it's very, it's not sensitive. Just say it like it is. She's a woman. Easy, easy clap. Let me just use photos to illustrate my point. Janaya used to look like this, and now she looks like this. Now that information would be entirely irrelevant if it wasn't for the way that Patrice Cullors saw it fit to spend the rest of Black Lives Matter's money. <sighs> Let me guess, trans, gender affirming surgeries, which let's call it what it is. It's sterilization, it's body mutilation, it's exploiting mental illness for profit. That's what it is. And it's, it's interesting when BLM came up again in 2020, uh, after the George Floyd incident happened, I remember asking myself, why are people marching in the midst of all this with trans lives matter signs. That doesn't make any sense, especially considering how the black community looks in terms of uh, broken households. So why are we promoting transgenderism when we know we have a problem with broken families in black America? That's just gonna make those matters worse, but again, if we looked on the website of Black Lives Matter, we saw that they wanted to disrupt the nuclear family. So in other words, you wanna fund essentially an ideology to help break down the black family even more. So Black Lives Matter is sounding a lot more like a movement to exterminate black people. If I'm being very direct, that's what it sounds like. According to their IRS form, $200,000 went to the Transgender Justice Funding Project. Another $200,000 went to the Transgender United Fund. Another $200,000 went to the Transgender Law Center. Another $200,000 went to Black Transgendered Media. Another $200,000 went to the Transgendered Variant and Intersex Justice Project. Another 200K went to the Transgendered District. Another 200K went to the St. James Infirmary. That organization, by the way, is for, according to their website, it's run by sex workers and is for them. Specifically, escorts, BDSM workers, strippers, peep show workers, phone sex operators, and webcam performers. Again, the black community has a big problem with broken households. So you're funding organizations that are promoting sex workers. How does that make sense? There's already a problem with people having sex outside of marriage. There's a problem with people having the hookup culture, the one night stands, and now we're gonna add sex work into the mix and then act shocked when the black community is living in poverty and there's uh, no fathers in the home. Why is that? How did we get there? This, how does this help? Another $400,000 went to Transgender Advocates Knowledgeable Empowering, or TAKE, as it's known for short, the founder of that organization. This is making me sick. Meanwhile, the IRS wants to know whenever you send or receive money that is $600 or more, but for some reason, uh, you can accumulate thousands upon thousands of dollars for all of these uh, trans organizations or social justice organizations. Totally fine. It's fine. Nothing to see here, folks. If you continue to look through BLM IRS docs, you'll notice that they gave millions of dollars to various Black Lives Matter organizations throughout America, or at least at first glance, it appears that they did. A closer look, you'll see that they actually dispersed that funding to organizations that were in care of Black Lives Matter. 
This means that actually another organization is accepting the donation on behalf of BLM. <laughs> So I decided to investigate that further and I noticed a really bizarre pattern. A lot of those organizations train activists. Uh -huh. They train the youth to become activists in their communities. One organization even goes as far as bragging on their website about their history of getting arrested, protesting, and they offer courses on various techniques like bird dogging. That's a technique that's used to confront politicians. I thought to myself, it's interesting because I kept hearing over and over again while filming this documentary that people felt as though the protesters that arrived throughout these cities weren't actually from the cities that they arrived in. They didn't know where they had come from. I don't know, buses, there was this idea that buses were showing up filled with protesters. It's a fair question then. Is it plausible that Patrice was giving money to groups that were creating protesters or training activists rather? I mean, why else would Patrice give millions of dollars to so many trained activists? I wanted to investigate that piece a little further, and so I made some phone calls. Okay, so before we continue with that, it, this m makes perfect sense. What Candace is describing is essentially the recruitment for social justice activists to help further the agendas of the political left. And how you do this is you first need to establish an ideology that will help attract your army, essentially. And that ideology being transgenderism and gender identity. This is why it's saturated in our media. This is why kids are learning about it in school. It's because if you get people when they're young, they're easier to propagandize. They're easier to brainwash. Okay. So... Uh, most people, by and large, if we're talking about adults, most people that fall into the gender identity trap tend to be those that are more liberal minded. They have a progressive mindset. Uh, you'll find some people who claim that they're trans and then also say I'm Republican, but uh, those are very far and in between. The majority of people that identify as the opposite sex are those on the political left. Now, the next part is to further the narrative. And you do this by saying, uh, here are these surgeries that you can have. Here are these hormones that you can take. Uh, everyone needs to respect your preferred pronouns and uh, trans rights, okay? There is no such thing as trans rights. There is only trans privilege. Everyone has their rights as a man or a woman. What people who fall into this trap don't understand is what they're asking for are additional privileges, the privilege to, as a biological man, go into a woman's space because you feel like you're a woman. That is a privilege. That's not a right. What they do is uh, they present that as part of the narrative. And if you disagree with that, now you have an enemy. Okay. The people that believe in reality and biology, those people are the enemy. And the end result is creating a political savior. Now, who is the political savior? The person in office that is promising all these trans people their rights okay it opens up that door for a savior to come in and make empty promises you can't create more black people unless of course black people make more babies which as we know Planned Parenthood is putting the brakes on that but you can create an infinite amount of foot soldiers through the gender identity ideology. All it takes is a little bit of brainwashing, a little bit of social conditioning, and bam, you have a new recruit for your army. So it's an unusual decision to buy a home uh, in a neighborhood that doesn't have any black faces and is surrounded by what we've been told are violent white people that uh -huh. don't want to see black Americans become better. So. Hopefully, as we are heading now to the house, we'll be able to speak somebody, speak to somebody on the property. Is this a creative space for black Americans? Why did we purchase this property with the money that was raised on the faces of so many dead black people? Um, I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna be a welcoming environment. Ha! Again, listen to what they say, watch what they do. On the one hand, you're saying white people are so bad, white supremacy this, white people are so racist and bigoted, so you go out and buy a house in a predominantly white area. These people do not care about the people that they say they do. They care about themselves. Hello? <laughs> Probably saw her on camera. Nope. 
I don't know if he's going to get someone. I see a very cute German Shepherd, it looks like. This morning, I woke up to Candace Owens being outside of my house <laughs> with a news crew. He looks to be maybe in his mid-40s, white male, black hat, and he is, whoever he spoke to on the phone has instructed, um, has instructed him to record us, which is strange because we just want to talk. And what I see in the driveway are two cars and a sign that says you are exactly where you are supposed to be. She was demanding that I come outside. Hi. Hello. Hi, you're welcome to record. I just want to talk. Are you instructed not to speak to anybody? We're not trying to harass you. We'll gladly leave. We're just wondering if we can speak to anybody. Sorry, what was that? OK, I just thought this was a house for Black Lives Matter. It's unacceptable and it's dangerous that anybody, any stranger, come outside of my house. You're just trying to think. Ma'am, uh, did I not see a bunch of Black Lives Matter peaceful protesters going outside of people's houses and uh, with death threats and signs and KKK pinatas? Did I, did I not recall seeing people be approached at their own house, at their own place of residence. I, I'm very confused. What happened this morning is not safety. Oh, shut up. It's not what I deserve. Oh, you want to be safe now? You want to be safe? Yeah? Now, now you want safety? But as you kept screaming, defund the police and all white people are bad and, you know, all the violence and rioting and looting, that now you care about safety? Hmm? It's not what any of us deserve. Those are I alligator can't see tears. how this purchase helped black lives anywhere in America. Uh -huh. I can't even find a black life on the property. Can't, the dog's not even black. So there's that. And so they're literally trying to destroy us. They're trying to destroy me. They're trying to destroy the movement. And I really I just need us to be stronger. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this reaction video. If you want to see the full thing, remember to go over to the dailywire.com to watch it. Um, now, if I can give you my final thoughts, I will say that I thought that this was a really well put together documentary. Candace outdid herself. So much research went into this. A lot of the things that were discussed, I already knew, uh, but I did learn a lot of other things uh, like where the money was going specifically and I had no idea it went that deep in terms of donating to sex workers and uh, transgenderism identity all that stuff I, I I did not know but it does make sense uh, now uh, what I hope people will take away after watching this is for anyone that still supports the Black Lives Matter movement you have to be you have to be ignorant <laughs> to not see how this movement has not done anything for the betterment of black people. And I hope that this will wake you up because make no mistake, there's going to be another movement just like BLM ready to exploit your emotions. And the other thing that I hope people recognize is the importance of not throwing your support blindly behind a group of people that share the same characteristic as you, as we saw with black lives matter and millions of people who donated to this organization for them to just what take that money and run with it they didn't do anything but the thing that initially drew people in was race and we have to stop blindly supporting things because we're emotionally attached to it or because the media props it in front of our face. We have to understand that the media's job is to keep your eyes glued to the TV or glued to your phone and not to necessarily speak the truth. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, go ahead and give that a like and hit that subscribe button. And if you have something else you'd like me to react to, let me know in the comments below. My name is Gothics and I I will see you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you want to keep my griff going, consider picking up some official merch by visiting gnosisnose.com forward slash gothics or joining my locals community at gothics.locals.com for more content. As always, you can help amplify my message by giving this video a thumbs up and by sharing it online with your friends. Until next time.